the bathtub where I, people thought they'd killed my friend and they had, to, they had me hogtied in the bathtub plotting my murder on one occasion. Well, I listened to myself, you know, they're going to take me outside so they wouldn't get blood all over me and stuff. And it was a, that was a different, that was with the Aryan brothers when they came in after me on that one. So I started doing programming for like spiritual stuff, like uh, tarot and palmistry and crystals and stuff. We're here once again for Skunk TV in collaboration with MJ360, bringing you the best of the cannabis industry movement. Uh, all of a sudden, when I was like 10 years old, um, they move over to Capitol on the beach, and the barn would goes up on the walls, and the artists start coming in, and they all start smoking pot together. Tim Blake, the founder of the Emerald Cup, the founder and visionary behind Area 101, the founder of Healing Harvest Farms, and whatever you see around here, whatever we shot today, whatever. You I was there when indoor started, and I was there when. We brought the outdoor in. I was here when they were bringing the 100,000 pound tie loads in. We were part of the 9.31, which is the first uh, legal program law enforcement. We could grow up to 99 plants. Uh, the Mike's come in, done a great job, and uh, really one of the best growers, uh, I think, the top of all the people I've worked with over the years, out of 100 or 200 growers. Uh, Mike really took to it well. And uh, you can see most of this is his handiwork, almost all of it. You can see it. So we had, you'll see this garden where we had 99 plants in that garden at one time. But the feds came in and attacked the program because they hated it. They didn't want it to go to be successful. And I had my own like of Healing Harvest Farm and then just realized that I really wanted to go back to the initial idea of helping all the local farmers get their product to dispensaries throughout California so they didn't have to do a black market send it back east, they could do it the way they wanted to, which was legally, legitimately, pay their taxes on it, and get the right kind of medicine. And the word to people that outdoor organic was as good or better than all the indoor. And this really is, this is the rock star commercial growing in Mendocino right here, this plant. Uh, Vans going to get today. Here we have a little, uh, this is a purple blueberry bubblegum. This is somebody's early strain. This is more of what you see in a traditional early strain. You don't see much resin on this. Uh, it's not heavy. It's not going to be that stony of a plant. Most of your early flowering plants really aren't that that resinous and strong. You got your early girls and uh, you know all, all types of early strains. Instead of having uh, 25 to 50 huge corporations own all of cannabis, it's more like why don't we have a quarter of a million small farmers throughout California that all have livelihoods and have families they can support and jobs for people that can be done right rather than uh, you know isolate all that money and all that power into a few people's hands and they don't even pay people right and have uh, you know, part-time wages for people. And then I became like 18 or 19 and I started working for these guys, it's like I was known as the kid. So basically I watched the evolution of the cannabis business from like 1970 on.